I have my, my garage doors open at the house, at the gym, so. All righty, let me get this thing adjusted here. <clears throat> Well, I have been uh, empowered to uh, give you guys some nutritional information, per se. Um, I know you guys are all smart enough to go spend your lunch uh, uh, half an hour um, to find your own information. My job, uh, and after 25 years of training, uh, has kind of given you the real life version of what I see every single day. I train the 97 percentile. I train normal working class population. I train moms, dads, grandmas, grandpas, sons, daughters, people that have jobs, uh, people that have to worry about the electric bill. Um, not many of the people I train are on the extremes, you know, that have nannies or have <laughs> cooks and chefs, uh, which I know isn't massively popular, but you guys have to think about your day and think about your stuff, and then all of a sudden it's 6 p.m. and you're hungry, right? And I do it too. Um, I'm just lucky I don't have an office job, so I move around all day long. So I'm just kind of the, the conduit for here's what scientifically happens, right? Which not a lot's changed over the life, right? A human is a human, right? We all have the same digestive system, per se. <laughs> a protein is a protein, and a carbo is a carbo, and a fat is a fat. However, life and, and cultural diversity and, and choices and all those things. So. I want to kind of take all that information and blend it, blend it, blend it. And I just want to be a source or an informational source for you guys. So that's kind of the start of this whole thing. Um, secondly, uh, I am not a nutritionist. I am not a dietitian. I am a nutritional consultant. I, am a, I have a bachelor's in biochemistry. Uh, that's what I graduated with, uh, you know, just a couple years ago. Uh, <laughs> and uh, I've been training for years and years and years. So um, I'm a nutritional consultant. I can't and don't leave, don't do the extremes of diabetes and heart disease and all those things. But again, I'm here to provide you information. So I just want to touch on the facts about protein, carbos, and fats. Right, just a couple minutes. Right, I'm not going to go through all this stuff. Right, um, but then I want to translate it into, you know, most people come in to see me and they're looking for some sort of body composition change. You can't tell me you literally work out just for fun, right? There's, there's some desires of maybe feeling better, looking better, tightening up, maybe losing five pounds, gaining five pounds. So then you kind of branch it off to what should be in your refrigerator and how easy it is to get to. So um, I think we're ready to go, rock and rolling. Protein, let's just talk about the quick thing about protein. The whole world talks about it. It is the foundation to how your body works. There is over 100,000 different proteins in your body. And so, just like your car, right? You need to put protein in your body to replenish what your protein is in your body, right? You have all these things. Your eyes require protein, your hair require protein, right? Your muscles clearly have protein. Uh, protein is good for joint stability, it's good for your brain, it's good for lots of things. But I'm not going to say protein is the end all be all. So protein, basics, every gram is four calories of energy, right? And of course, kilocalories, right? So if you are on a hundred gram protein diet, which is very high for some of you, and some of you are like, dude, that's like astronomical. That's only 400 calories coming from protein. Oh, wait a second here. So I eat 2,000 calories a day, and I'm only getting 400 calories from protein. That's 40% of my diet. Okay, well, that kind of makes a little bit of sense, right? Sorry, not 40%. Uh, that'd be, yeah, four, about 40%. Um, give or take, brain just turned off on that one. So most of my ladies, I try to get them above 75 grams, and they hover between 75 and 100 grams of protein. And that is the fitness version of body composition changes. Notice I didn't say losing weight. However, it's kind of hand in hand. You could go up to a little bit more. Most of my men range between 130 and 180 grams of protein a day. And all I want you to think about is that is replenishing what your body needs to be efficient and strong and powerful and all those things. But calorically, it's only four calories per gram, okay? And again, quick, a couple quick things. Protein is a, a, the Greek word, right, proteos, and it means primary and it holding the first place. So back in, uh, oh gosh, 1838, the definition of protein, uh, and it holds the primary term of, of our unit of energy and nutrition. 
Uh, again, protein, carbos, and fat, they are macronutrients. Your body requires them for energy. Um, the number one source of quality and quantity of protein is from fish. That is a fact. Uh, yellow fish would be the number one highest uh, grams of protein per serving. On a six ounce serving, you're gonna get 30 grams of protein. And again, there's quality and quantity. Eggs, for example, are the absolute best protein you can have. Your body will digest it the best, all those wonderful things. But you're only gonna get about six to eight grams of protein per egg. I don't think you wanna eat four eggs, you know, for a snack, right? To get your 30 grams of protein. So there are many, many sources of protein which we can go through later on. Um, again, I already talked about your hair needs it, your eyes need it. Um, your, your body needs it. There's a, a, a protein called albumin. If we didn't have it, we would literally walk around all puffy and swollen, right? So it needs that stuff. Um, going to the vegetarian world, right? Larger, older, mature beans will have the most protein. So mature soybeans will have the most protein as far as a vegetarian is concerned. Uh, pumpkin and squash seeds provide protein. Right, so we've kind of beat up protein quite a bit. Uh, all those wonderful things need to happen for protein. If you want to talk fitness, you need it. Your body needs to recover with it. Uh, you will see physical change. Uh, protein will fuel the muscles, and again, it keeps your body efficient. And if you want to gain weight, you're going to be about 1.2 to 1.5 grams per desired body weight. Uh, and again, I can email this stuff to you guys later on. If you want to lose weight, right, change your body composition, lose fat, you want to be between 0.75 grams up to 1.0 gram per your desired body weight. And easy math. If you want to be 100 pounds, which is tiny, right, you would want to be 75 grams of protein a day, right? That's just to work. Let's move on to protein. Carbohydrates. It's almost too easy to talk about them, but they get such a bad rap. Fact, broccoli is a carbohydrate. So if you're telling me you're not eating carbohydrates, well, you're not eating broccoli, that's not fair. Asparagus, cauliflower, strawberries, bananas, they are all carbohydrates. But we also assume eating a sandwich with bread is a carbohydrate, right? So you have your simple carbohydrates, right? The, the bad ones, you don't wanna have simple carbohydrates. Those are normally added sugars. You know, the sweeteners of things, high fructose, glucose stuff. Complex carbohydrates is, of course, and again, I know we're all educated and we're all, it's not 1995 anymore. Uh, car complex carbohydrates, right, are the whole grain fruit, uh, foods, the, the starchy vegetables, you know, rices and breads and cereals. Again, the whole grain versions, the ones that crunch a little bit, not because of the sugar coating, right? Those things will provide the complex carbohydrates. However, like your protein, carbohydrates are four calories of energy per gram. And I only think about carbohydrates as literally the gas you're gonna put in your car. If you don't have carbohydrates, you don't work. And if you wanna have super premium and spend $4 a gallon, then you're gonna crank up those complex carbohydrates, right, the whole grain foods, um, all those you know, green starchy vegetables, and you're gonna rock and roll and feel like a million bucks. And if you wanna put the cheapy, cheapy unleaded, like, you know, that I put in my truck, uh, <laughs> you're still gonna drive down the road. You just might be just a smidge less efficient, and you might need to find yourself taking uh, supplements to get those nutritional pieces uh, from your carbohydrates. So, low carbo diets per se, I like to use word meal plans. Most people accidentally go too low. So protein, your 0.75 grams per desired body weight, give or take. Women should be 75 to 100 grams. Men should be 130 to 180 grams of protein. Carbohydrates are somewhat similar, but let's say you want to lose weight, right? So I'm gonna say the day before you do your workout, so Sunday is normally our sit around day, I want you to bring the carbohydrates up. Carb loading, you've heard of that before, right? So let's get those carbs up, you know, 0 0.75, 0 0.85 grams per your desired body weight. So you're gonna get those carbs up a little bit, and then on the day you work out, I want your carbs low, and so you're gonna get down to 0 0.65, right? 0 0.5 grams. 
You've heard of carb loading before. I hope you have. Every single athlete in the world that does it, right? They're gonna run a marathon. They carb load before. Everybody plays football and baseball and basketball. There's carb loading. So, carbohydrates, similar numerically, right? You're gonna be 65 to 100 grams of carbohydrates a day, and that's based on what you're doing with them. If you are sitting around doing nothing, and maybe we can talk about right now, if you're struggling being at home, not going to the office, uh, and although it's been six weeks, right, if you still haven't gotten out of your pajamas during the day and you're working at home, <laughs> then let's bring those carbohydrates down because you're not doing anything with them. If you found yourself fueling your car less than the last six weeks, you should probably bring the fuel down in your, in your carbohydrates a little bit too. And remember, complex carbohydrates, your whole grain cereals, your brown rices, right again, whole grains, your darker fruits, your vegetables, low, lower fat dairy, okay? The complex carbohydrates, the crunchy ones, the good for you ones, and yeah, unfortunately still kind of the expensive ones. They take a little longer to digest. They provide a little bit more nutrients. You have a little bit lower of a glycemic index, so you have less of an insulin spike, right? There's a reason for those, the simple sugars, right? The quick energy, the up, 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 up. When you need that, your body produces insulin quickly. And then when you produce insulin, this is a fact. When your body has to produce insulin, your body will store fat, fact. So if you put in things that produce less insulin, right? Slower over time, your body will produce less insulin, sorry, less carbohydrate, less insulin, right? So I know I'm going kind of quickly because shorter presentation. We talk protein, we talk carbohydrates, again, just some facts. We talk about fat. When your body has to produce insulin, glycemic index, right? The response to sugar, then your body's gonna store fat. Well, there is consumable fat and then there is body fat. When you consume fat, you're gonna consume nine calories per gram, right? So a 10 gram food is 90 calories from fat alone. So it's a really skewed number, right? It's hard to digest fat, right? You have all these enzymes trying to kick in so you can digest fat. When you burn fat, which again, on the flip side, it is hard to burn fat. I work out so much, I work out so much. Why is it still there? You need to be efficient. When your body actually burns fat, you will yield seven calories of energy. So if you can tap into those fat stores, then you're actually gonna produce more energy. You gotta get there, which means you need to burn your sugar off. You need to kind of burn all those other little things hanging around, right? Amino acids, the proteins. You gotta burn those things off efficiently and then you go in for the kill. To pause on this, the fitness version, a 30 minute strength workout, a 45 minute strength workout with 15 minutes of cardio afterwards, that is when you'll be the most efficient. You will burn more fat. You will tap into those fat stores once you have depleted the easy things. So fat, it gets all these weird things. What is fat? Well, there's essential fatty acids that we need. So you have to eat fat. Most people should be between 30 and 50 grams of fat a day, give or take, right? I'm trying to lose weight. I'm trying to lose weight. I don't want to eat fat. No, you have to have fat to burn fat. So if you go below 20 grams of fat a day, which I have seen, if you are going to drink your protein and not eat your protein, you will not get enough fat in your body, right? You're gonna get more fat from animal products. You get less fat from your vegetarian products, even though there's still fat in there. Essential fatty acids, right? You have your omega-3s, your omega-6s, your DPAs, your EPAs. You have all these fatty acids for inflammation, increasing and decreasing, joint stuff, brain stuff. Woo! You gotta have fat. If you don't have fat, you won't burn it. What are good fat stores, right? You have your legumes, you have your nuts, you have your seeds, right? So EFAs, essential fatty acids. You need to get pumpkin seeds, flax seeds, tofu, walnuts, dark green vegetables. You want to have higher omega-3s. Omega-6s are still good for you, right? They're in the nuts, they're in the seeds, the legumes, the dairy, and the grains. 
but cholesterol, right, the HDL, LDL, right, the kind of ratio there, the same thing with omega-3s and omega-6s. Omega-6 fatty acids, although good for you, too much is bad for you, just like your HDL on cholesterol. A little too much HDL will be bad for you, even though you want HDL. Uh, again, cholesterol, different subject. But you need to have fat. With that, your fatty soluble vitamins, right? Your vitamin A, D, and E, those help the whole thing out, right? Again, 20 to 35% of your calories should be coming from fat. Most Americans hover around 34% of the calories from fat. Now I'm talking percentage. On a 2,000 calorie diet, right? People are gonna get 60 to 70 grams of fat when you really should be down around 30 to 50 grams of fat a day. So, my challenge to you guys currently, I know it's a uh, 1040 something, right? 1049, oh good. So, my challenge to you, because I wanna do a couple more quick things if you have time. When, over the next two weeks, right? Take a picture of some of the, the higher consumed products that you have. Uh, I was even talking to Kyoko yesterday and I'm gonna do a refrigerator challenge. Take a picture of things that are in your refrigerator, the label. I don't wanna see what you're eating. I wanna see the label of it. And I want you to educate yourself. Take a peek at how many grams of protein and grams of carbohydrates and grams of fat a day. And the easy way to do that also is to get on MyFitnessPal. It's a free app. And just download a day or two, right? Right now, everybody's probably eating pretty consistently, right? Not a lot of you are traveling and eating out and all the restaurants are closed. Uh, I know you can order takeout, but take a picture of it, right? Do a couple days of research and feel free to send me that data. I'm your trainer, right? Now, I gotta be careful if I get 100 people buzzing me, but I wanna provide the information. How many grams of protein, carbohydrates, and fat are you getting? And I'm hoping you're above 75 grams of protein. Guys, I hope you're above 110, 120 grams of protein. I want you all 30 to 50 grams of fat. I would love it if the ladies were down around the 30 and the guys are between 40 and 50, right? Fat, sorry, it's a little unfair. Um, most of it's based on body weight and what we do with it. And of course, we do store fat differently. Uh, men and women store their fat, actually the opposite. Uh, most of the men store their fat between their muscle, which is why we have more heart attacks. And women store their fat on top of their muscle. So that's why an uh, overweight male can still look fit. Uh, your carbohydrates, again, this is gonna be a huge range. What are you doing about it? 65 to 130 carbohydrates. If you are moving your body and you're huffy puffy sweaty and you're lifting and you're doing your stuff, you need more carbos. If you're doing nothing, bring them down, but I didn't say zero, right? Protein is easy. Eat your meats, eat your legumes, eat your beans, your nuts, uh, all those wonderful things. Um, carbohydrates make them more complex, make them more crunchy, make them more ground. Um, your fruits are going to carbohydrates, your good fruits, again, which I can email you this stuff, your good fruits, avocados considered a fruit, papaya, guava, cantaloupe, orange, apricots, mango, strawberries. Guess what your worst two fruits are? And this is based on glycemic index and overall nutritional value. Apples and bananas are technically the worst fruits you can have. I didn't say they're bad for you, but if you're talking about glycemic index, sugar content, and the actual overall nutrition, they give you the least amount of nutrition. Your veggies, artichokes, whoa, beans, kidney and black beans, beets, broccoli, chickpeas, your lentils, your spinach, your sweet potatoes, your tofu, <gasps> veggies can be good. Guess what is kind of a lower uh, nutritional value? Kale, dude, I love kale. Kale's amazing. Kale fills me up. Like I get so much good food out of kale. However, it's just a really hard leafy green that helps you with digestion. There's not a lot of nutrition in kale, but again, I didn't say kale was bad for you. Protein, I know I'm going quickly. Fish, right? Fish is way up there, quality, quantity. Egg whites, eggs in general too. Cottage cheese, that's pretty good. You got your poultry, all your chickens are there. Kidney beans, tofu, yogurt, beef. I love me a steak. 
It doesn't sit very well on me anymore. I've kind of grown into uh, the red blood cell thing with you. Um, those are your proteins. I know I've talked quite a bit. I don't have a ton more time. I, I can go until noon if you want me to. If you are interested in making change, let me know. Shoot me an email, uh, seriousaboutfitness at gmail. I'm not here to sell you guys anything, okay? But I'm gonna go over the metabolic blitz. I can go over the nutritional values. I can remind you on the things that we just talked about. And I can give you quick information about you. How much do you weigh and all those things I'm gonna ask. What are you doing about it? Uh, uh, and we can make it more you specific. Um, if you are interested in doing a refrigerator challenge, it'd be kind of fun. I don't think we have a whole lot to give away on that regard, but I kind of want to see who's got the best looking refrigerator. Now, I didn't say the cleanest refrigerator. I'm talking about the best functional use refrigerator. I live in a two bedroom apartment with those, one of those little refrigerators with three shelves in the, in the freezer on top. I've got my drinkables on the top, milks and orange juice and my green juice. And yeah, I have my beer in my refrigerator too, right? On the middle shelf, I have all of my meat products, anything easily grabbable. I have a six year old, a four year old. So on the bottom is all their stuff, their yogurts, their cheese sticks. Now I don't have the cleanest refrigerator, but it's organized for functionality. If it's easy to grab, I'm gonna eat it. So I wanna put the better foods in front so I can get to it. If I have my to-go uh, Mexican food that I had the other night, although I do wanna eat it, I wanna put it in the back because it overall wasn't the best thing for me. So I kinda wanna see who's got the best looking refrigerator. Uh, I don't know the exact path for this. Again, you can email me, seriesaboutfitness at gmail. I will keep things pro confidential and private but I kind of want to, in two weeks, when we do the next uh, one of these, uh, tell people who have the best looking refrigerator or even just show the picture of why I think it's the best looking refrigerator. Colorful fruits and vegetables, right? You open up that vegetable cooler and it's colorful, right? You have the reds and the purples and the greens. That's going to be a very attractive thing. It's going to be accessible, right? You have all your meats available. If you pre-meal uh, plan and you have all your stuff, right? It's stacked and it's easy to grab. So it's the first thing to grab. Yeah, I have ice cream in my freezer too. But I put it behind my, uh, my breakfast burritos, my little eggs and things I get from Costco. Because I'm probably going to grab my ice cream for breakfast, honestly. Versus my breakfast burrito if it's in front of me. Um, again, I kind of want to have a challenge. So if you guys are interested in that... So take a picture of your refrigerator. I want to see how it looks. And then if you are interested in getting your protein, carbos, and fats, let me know. I can help you out with that number. Is there any questions? Let's see what we got here. Yeah, I have a question. I love it. I love it. So the egg white has between four and six grams of protein. Now remember, you go to the store, right? You have your brown eggs, your white eggs, you have your omega-3 eggs. So four to six grams of protein are going to be in the egg white. You're going to have another one to four grams of protein in the egg yolk. Now, here's my personal thing. I am three egg whites and one of them has the yolk for me personally. That's just something I've done my whole life to stay lean. Egg yolks get a horrible rap. They are good for you. They have a bunch of nutritional qualities. They just have the fat. The egg white has the protein. Awesome, thank you. Mm -hmm. A good question on them. Anybody else? I'm gonna fail that contest, I love it. I just wanna see a picture of your refrigerator, maybe a picture of your pantry. I can help you organize it, it sounds corny. Make the good things easy to grab. Uh, the app, my fitness pal is a free app. Um, it has the largest database for downloading or sorry, not downloading, uh, for entering your data. It has the largest database in the entire world for, Oh, I eat X and it's going to have it. It has scanning things. You can scan your thing and it just loads it all in there. So it's a really cool free app. And like any app, you have your upgrades. Don't do the upgrades. Just get the free app and enter your stuff. Chris, uh, uh, Chris, a question I have. Should I be in a calorie deficit uh, to, to lose weight? 
No. I want you to, and notice I actually didn't talk, cal I, I did extra calories. I want you to think about nutritional balance. So no, I don't want you in a nutritional deficit. I want you to think balance. So if you could focus on a couple things, you said you want to lose weight. I want to know how many grams of protein you're eating now. And I want to see, and again, I don't want you to go there now because you're just going to go to the bathroom all day long. I want you to get between 130 to 150. However, I'm giving you a general number. I kind of want to know a little bit more about you. Um, but no, I don't mean a calorie deficit. I want to have a nutritional balance between your protein, carbos, fat. 0.75 grams of protein for your desired body weight, give or take. 0.65 to 1.0 on the carbs. It depends on what you're doing about it. And again, you're 30 ish percent on your fat. So you're going to be around 40 to 50 grams of fat. And of course, uh, I don't know who said that last question to me, but please email me. I would like to know a little bit more about you. What are the side effects? Uh, the side effects of too much protein. It's too much protein consistently. And I'm talking about two to three weeks and you're pounding 200 grams of protein a day, your body will get into a state of ketosis and there is good ketosis like the keto diet and there's bad ketosis of all the toxins you're creating. And so you'll develop gout, right? You can start getting headaches, you can start getting your stomach aches and yes, it can turn in, I mean, it takes a while, but yeah, you can even get blood disease. Um, but that you're talking about a high protein diet for a long period of time, unless you have a predisposition to liver or kidney issues. And of course, Larry, please email me on if, if you have any questions on that one. It takes a long time, but it can happen. I love it. So you can ne you can never target fat. However, men, I'm sorry, ladies, men have this lucky situation of being able to burn fat easily. So, uh, I, first of all, I need to know your numbers on stuff. Please email me. That's what I'm supposed to do with you guys, right? I want it. Um, I want you hovering again around the 30% of fat, right? We got to get that number your desired body weight. We need to get that protein down. We got to adjust things. I would like you to do third, if you can, right? Time is in essence. If you could get up and do 30 minutes of light cardio in the morning, and if you could lift, that'd be awesome for your muscles and body composition somewhere in the day, a 30 minute lift and or 30 minutes of cardio before you go to bed. Oh my gosh, I just asked a lot of things. So efficiency, 30 minutes in the morning, 30 minutes at night, you separate it a little bit so you have your hour for the day. And if you did that for two weeks, I kind of want to know if you lost an inch. Like it'd be cool to do the whole uh, tape measure on the belly and it takes a time, right? It takes a little time, but 30 minutes of cardio in the morning. And then if you could lift 30 minutes in the day, evening and or do a 30 minute cardio at night, I would be really curious to know the, the change in your, again, belly weight. That's a hard one to get after. It's part sweaty, huffy, puffy, and it's part super efficiency. Did that answer your question? Um, define light cardio. Light cardio is heart rate between 135 and 145. That is book value fat burning zone. Uh, it's probably the 65 to 70 percent heart rate range if you know your max. Uh, and again, most people actually don't know their real max. So the heart rate 135 to 145 is defined as light cardio. It's something sustainable for at least 20 minutes. Uh, if you start getting too low, like you're like, gosh, I can't, I can't it just keeps going down. You want to try to bring it back up. Uh, and if again, it's hard to get down to, it might be 140 to 150, but book value is 135 to 145. Uh, side effects with protein is taking protein prior to bedtime beneficial. Absolutely. Taking protein really anytime. And again, I'm not here to be like protein is the God protein helps you stay satiated. Protein can last up to 20, uh, sorry, 48 hours in your body. And so it can be digested over time. However, if you eat that sugary product beforehand, it's just going to sit there and rot. So protein, if you take protein, it will be help you stay more satiated, right? And then you're going to digest it over a long period of time. So you actually will probably still feel full in the morning. Should. 
That's a great question. Larry's got some great questions. Hey, Chris. Mm -hmm. So another question I had, you're talking like insane amounts of protein. Like, <laughs> I've heard other trainers or even like, you know, stuff I've seen online so mm -hmm. I only need like 60 grams of protein mm -hmm. so like why like why why is there a difference I love thank you that's a good one so I every time I talk about the protein intake and again I'm not saying protein is the end-all be-all it just your body needs so much of it however I am always going to refer to the protein intake calorie intake fat intake the fitness version of losing weight and or and or body composition changes right so unfortunately i and i try to preface that as much as possible i'm not talking about just dieting my goal is for anybody here is to do at least three days 30 minutes three days a week right an hour and a half a week would be awesome right just the benefit just the minute minimal um but most of you guys on here and most of you guys know me a little bit i always want you to be some sort of fit whether you just go for walks just go for jogs whether you lift every day with me for 35 45 minutes if you do this the fitness version right you're not going to lose weight by doing fitness this is all about feeling good heart soul and lungs and your muscles uh, but if you're, if the protein intake I'm talking about, the fat intake I'm talking about is all based on the fitness version of body composition changes. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Yeah. Does that make sense, Kyoko? Uh, I'm sorry. Did that make sense to answer your question on that one? Was that Kyoko that asked that? And again, there, there are, if I'm just going to diet, if I'm just not going to, and, and I get it, right? If I'm just going to eat better and I want to feel better and I want to look better, but I'm not going to work out. Yeah, the numbers are a little bit different. So please email me. Hey, Chris, I am not working out. I am not going to do that. I need to adjust the numbers. And of course it is different, right? Carbohydrates are the fuel. So if you're not moving your body, we got to bring those down too. If you're not going to, you know, challenge your muscles and and joints to working out then yeah we got to change the protein number two but it's still always going to be a little bit higher than the carbs um do you have a favorite recommendation protein uh thank you Malia. the so here's protein right i my you know, i got my tummy right whey protein is supposed to be the easiest most accessible protein the cheapest protein your body naturally produces produces it in some ways it's supposed to be the best protein for you. However, everybody has a different tummy. So you have your soy proteins, right? You have your egg isolate proteins. Uh, so if you can rank it, whey is supposed to be number one. Again, it's supposed to be. Egg isolate is supposed to be number two. And now you want to talk about diversity. I don't do, I'm a vegan, right? If you are a vegan, well, you can't do either of those. Whey and egg isolate, you can't do. So now you got to go to your vegan proteins and you can get Vega at Costco. You can get Vega on Amazon and those would be your vegetarian your vegan based proteins and of course then you go down that list a little bit to your uh where my cheat sheet here we go where my cheat sheet go <clears throat> yeah our, uh so yeah whey protein egg isolates you know when you're eating fish dairy products uh your legumes you start getting out of the synthetic proteins when you get down to those Type it in there. Way. Anybody else? The di what are the differences of a 30 minute workout in the morning and a 30 at night as opposed to 60 minutes at once? Frank, I love you. I love it. Body efficiency, the ability to recover. Personally, right? As an athlete, as a trainer, gosh, I would love 75 minutes of your time. I would love the hour workout. But if you're talking about, I need to teach my body to be efficient. I need to burn fat. I want to burn off my sugar. I want to maintain my energy stores for living my day and, and having the 20 meetings you guys have a day. I want you to think efficiency. And I know you're not bodybuilders. Okay. But bodybuilders, uh, people you see on TV, they're doing 
90 minutes cardio in the morning and 30 minute lifting in the day and 90 minutes cardio at night and it's all about efficiency. So you have the, I need to maintain energy storage, I need to burn off my sugar, I need to burn off all those things, get the carbon monoxide out of my body and lactic acid out of my body, and then I need to push the limits. So it's just efficiency. If you can pound 60 minutes a day and you are gonna be efficient, rock it, man, love it. <laughs> uh, what is the best time to work out in the evening and at night? Ooh boy, right for bed. <sighs> if I were to work out after 6 p.m., I wouldn't fall asleep till midnight. I could drink a coffee at 9 p.m. and go to bed at 9, 10, you know, and so everybody's gonna be different. I would test it out. I would say, if you're gonna to try to go to bed at 10, see what a 7 or 8 p.m. 30 minute cardio or workout looks like for you. And if you stay awake till midnight, you know you need to bring it down a little bit. Um, overall efficiency, if you're able to do 30 minute of cardio, take that shower, rinse off, and be able to go to sleep within 90 minutes to two hours, boom. You're not gonna snack. You're not gonna delve into the snack jar. Hopefully, you know, make other choices. That 30 minutes cardio and then it's prep for bedtime. Your body would be efficient. However, some people wake up and some people don't. Did I answer your question, Sophia? Is it Sophia, Sophia, Sophia? Yes, thank you. I love it. You guys are all staying on. Any questions? I'm trying to read through these. If you, again, if you email me at seriousoffitness at gmail.com, I can give you all my cheat seat sheets on this stuff. I can hear more about you, your age, your weight, the goal. Um, you know, everybody works differently. How many muscle groups should we be working during a workout? Corey, come see me, baby. Um, you know what? If you, if, if you were, if I were to send you all the workouts we've been doing, you'd probably see, gosh, it's not always full body, but I would say we're probably three separate muscle groups a day. Chest, back, legs, and of course legs is a very diverse muscle group. Um, and then sometimes we'll just do like the other day with agility and abs and we did some upper body. Um, again, it's all based on time. If you, let's just say you're gonna do 30 minutes. Chris, I'm gonna do 30 minutes every single day. I would say do two muscle groups per day. Quads, chest, back, hamstrings, buys, tries, calves, abs, and that would be efficiency so you can hit your muscle groups. The magic number per week, if you are looking for physical change, I would like to see my muscles. You know, I'm not talking about being ripped and buff, but I wanna see my muscles. If you can hit 20 to 25 sets per week of a muscle group, chest, back, shoulders, you know, your legs in general, you can generalize your legs on that you're gonna see massive physical change. And again, I didn't say get buff and ripped, um, but 20 sets a week on your big muscle groups is kind of the magic number for seeing change. I know it sounds like a lot, but there's an easy way to get there. And Corey, if I can actually, Corey Cox, I can actually send you all the workouts we've been doing. So you go, oh, okay, I see what's going on here. Anybody else? I like this. This is a good, good meeting. Hey, Chris. Mm -hmm. So let's say, like, you know, I don't want to date a Corona-19, a, a, a COVID-19. Mm -hmm. um, so like, I just want to do, like, liquid diets or shakes or smoothies, you know, just mm -hmm. to, like, so I can get my calories, but, you know, not, not you know, go over anything. Mm -hmm. I'm just kind of like, you know, limit it to a liquid diet. Is, is that healthy? No, and I like that. Um, I want people, because everybody's different, right? You, the keto diet is phenomenal. Is it sustainable? Are you able to replicate it every single day for a substantial period of time? Mm, it's hard. Liquid diets, awesome. But I actually, one of my really good friends, he owns a gym in Seattle. He's been a fruititarian. I know it sounds funny. He has been a fruititarian his entire life. And if you saw him, Dude, he, he puts me to shame. I'm like, what the heck? Um, is, is it replicable? Is it attainable? Are you able to keep doing it? The downside about drinking all of your food is just saturation, right? It, putting a solid product in your body occasionally, your body will absorb it, right? You, know, you, have a, you have digestive enzymes. You have things that have a job to do in your body. And a liquid diet 
They're, mo they're most known for like their 10 day, you know, body composition change. They're good for a small period of time to create change that forces you to do something about it. I'm not saying it's horrible and I'm not saying you shouldn't do it, but I want you to look at it as a temporary, you're gonna teach your body that you're in control. And after that three day or 10 day period of time, then hopefully you get on a good balanced diet. And again, I know it's hard to do math, but if you just focus on one thing, 75 grams of protein, if you just focus on that one thing, then it can branch out easily to the other hows. Again, I'm not saying those things are bad. Keto diet is great. Are you able to maintain it? The 10 day blast of the fruit juice, of the, the veggie blends, right? Are you able to maintain it? Did you get depleted? Were you sleeping half the day? Or are you going to the bathroom all day long? There's so many other factors behind that. That was a long-winded answer, sorry. <laughs> you, got, you got me on that one. Uh, can I talk about recovery time? Uh, if you're talking about workout recovery time, it kind of depends on what you're doing. Um, most, if you are not recovered on your body, you worked out, let's say, let's say it's Tuesday. Let's say you worked out yesterday. Yes, we're not, thank you. Let's say you worked out on Monday, right? And you, you were depleted. You went to bed last night and you were smoked and you got up this morning and you felt good. Awesome, rock and roll. Uh, if you wanna talk about, oh, Chris, I did 20 sets of chest yesterday. You shouldn't hit your chest for four or five more days at a minimum. Um, again, going to back to the magic number. If you did chest on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and you did six sets of chest on each day, and of course I'm just using chest, quads, hamstrings, glutes, calves, back. If you did 20 sets in a week, you're safe. Six on Monday, six on Wednesday, six on Fridays, 18. That's pretty dang close. Um, if you wake up in the morning and you're trashed and you're achy and you're sore, definitely do the other muscle groups. Um, if you can, you feel like you're just doing too much, lift on Monday, cardio on Tuesday, lift on Wednesday, cardio on Thursday. And again, this is why you probably see so many different programs out there. It's all about your response. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, so how much water should you drink in a day on average? Oh boy, Sophia. I really want you drinking more than a gallon of water a day. I, it would be phenomenal if everybody on this call drank a gallon of water a day. And after a week, I want to know what you thought. Not after a day, not after three days, after a week. I want to know how you feel. I want to know how your skin changed. I want to know, I don't know how many times you're in the bathroom. We all know that answer. I want to know what's going on because you'll know the answer. I know somebody that drinks a gallon and a half a day, and I know somebody that drinks literally zero a day. It's, it's up to you, but if you try to do a gallon of water a day for a week, I wanna know how you feel on the eighth day. I got to leave around, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh-huh, anybody there? I like it. As you guys can all tell, I'm a realist. I am real life. You've got kids, you've got work, you gotta pay the bills. Thank you, Kyle. Uh, you, know, you, you know, I'm a realist, so I'm all about the balancing act. Uh, I just wanna give you the best tools possible. Everybody doing good? What workout class? Can sales get involved? Amy, I definitely get a hold of Kyoko and Malia. I don't want to, to overstep my boundaries. Um, I'm under the impression that, let me just check here, uh, working on it. Thank you, dear. Um, can, can I speak? Yeah, oh yeah, please. Okay. Um, so we are actually working on getting a, uh, a recruitment session for Kyoko and Malia. Um, they are going to be for all of the sales folks so you can go ahead and um, follow Chris's workouts with him and his other trainers that he has so you should be seeing communications about that sometime this week Amy um, Malia am I free can I email everybody the workouts we've done the last two weeks just the the link sure. cool Amy you're uh, let me get you there where they go where they go Amy Sorensen Amy I will email you what we have done you're gonna have the written workout they're, they all have hyperlinks. Uh, and then you actually can click on the YouTube video of the workout that we did. So, Amy, let me get that there. And that way you can at least see an example of what we've been doing. Yep, so currently I'm, um, I have a session with Chris and Malia that I will get everybody in the field access to. 
to hopefully later today or tomorrow. Okay. Um, that will also have links that will bring them straight to those YouTube videos gotcha. with those workouts as well. Cool. It's been fun. Uh, this is uh, an Amy and Corey. Thank you. I got your message. Uh, yes, please email me. And I actually wrote your name down here. I'll email you too. Um, this was a huge change. I, I've been a personal trainer in a gym for 25 years. I am a, uh, I'm an in-person person. <laughs> uh, so this has been, and I know everybody's had to make changes. It's been a, a very fun challenging change and I'm getting so much positive feedback so I, I get I got energized by it so we've been doing a lot of work so uh, let's go there we got uh, Corey I email you give us the workout regiment yep mm -hmm. yep Corey it's gonna be hard for the and I got this right spelling yes Leah uh, it's gonna be hard to give you the right diet plan based on your goal types but I want to help you get the numbers I want to know you okay And I'll always use the word meal plans and macronutrient balance. I like a good call today. Okay.